Awesome. My beautiful girl. You are so beautiful. Hi. Hi. I made a laugh over Zoom but the other day or FaceTime. But I think she's seeing me up close right now. And she's just going, oh, wow. All that beauty in one person. Hi. Oh, welcome, Ralph. It's great to see Mr. Ralph there. Hi, Ralph. How are you? All right, let's get started. I think we. Hey, online, welcome. I think we've stretched enough. His granddad's so proud. He's taking photos. Ralph, you don't have to go sit at the back. You can stay at the front if you want. She was born on the 28th of May, 2022. So that's really cool. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Wow. Addison is her name. Can you just say her name once with me, Addison? It means son of Adam or person of Adam. And it means, or a, a son of the ground. I know, that's what it means. It means son of the ground. And it's a picture of God's creation. It's not just saying that she's the son or the daughter of the name. That's where the name's derived from, Ad, son, Addison. And so it's a, it's a picture of God's creation. That when God came to the earth, after He created it, it says that He formed Adam from the dust of the earth, from the soil. And in chatting with the parents, we've been talking about how Addison is such a miracle for you both. What a journey it has been to have this beautiful girl. Ups and downs and all arounds. Testing times and sacrifice. And I'm gleaning over that. But for them that had to live that, that was really tough, really difficult, really sacrificial. But the reward stands before you today in the miracle that is Addison Joan McGuinness. You're a miracle, darling. I know. It's nothing like chewing your finger. Psalm 139, 16 says, Your eyes, this is God's perspective about us. Imagine that this is God right now and that is you. Listen to this. Your eyes saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. There is a book that has got Addison on it, that is before God, that is being recorded every day of her life. And I think that's not just for Addison and meant to sound cute. That's the truth and the reality of the God that we sing about and the God that we're speaking about that He says to each and every one of us and to you, because you're the most important one right now, that you have a book about you. I know. The Adventures of Addison. There we go. So understanding why as a church we dedicated it, and this is why I'm so honoured to be a part of this moment with you too. Because I got to do your wedding. I got to see you when you were a baby. I didn't get to see you. But you're much better. Um, but I got to see you growing up. And I got to see your life and your journey. And so to be connected like this, for me, is a ridiculous honor. But it's also so God. And so now I get to see the next generation. Um, Mum Stephanie down here. Which is really awesome. So dedication just means set apart to God. That's what this is today. Is that Addison is dedicated to God for His purpose. And I love Adam and, and Emma's just their conversation around this. They're saying that they recognize that as parents, they can do so much, but they are wanting to say, God, we need you. We need your help. And we... We're inviting you in. And so that's part of what this dedication means today. And so they're taking this public statement today to dedicate Addison Joan McGuinness back to God. 
They're saying, God, thank you for giving us this beautiful girl. Thank you for the journey that you've helped us through, brought us through to this moment, to this time. And so we're recognizing that this is a gift that you've given us. And so in these few moments, we just want to say publicly, that's what they're saying. God, we're going to give her back to you. And the thing about that is not that God just takes and goes and walks off. What it is, it's God, God being invited into their lives as parents, into her life, to be there. I think that's a really great thing. It's like having a big brother over you all the time. But it's a God that says this, I'll never leave, I'll never forsake, you'll always be there. That's his commitment to this moment. It's not a religious thing that we just go, okay, you better be a good person right now. I know, you want to see me. It's just about, God, we invite you to help. Let me just read you a couple of scriptures and then we're going to dedicate her. So there's a book recorded about her. The second thing that I love about God, he says that before you were born, I knew you. Jeremiah 1.5, this is guy, Jeremiah, a young guy. God's having a conversation with him and he says, Jeremiah, before you were born, I actually knew you. So Addison, I think that says that God already knows who you are and he knows everything about your life. And so we're really thrilled today. So parents, this is my conversation to you or my charge to you. And just at the end of this, just say, we will. I loved what you said to me when you said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And you have seen the pressures through life and in, in wanting to have a beautiful girl and now you have. And the other thing that you said, you have found that working together makes us stronger. And that's a unique gift that you both have. Never lose it never traded for anyone or for anything. And this is what the Lord says today as you invite Him. So together with Him, nothing will be able, able to take you apart, to kill you, to destroy, to steal from you. Together with God today, you are inviting Him into that place. And with Him, you're going to be stronger as a family. These are the words that He says to you. These are the words that I'm giving you today. And I want them to be put into your heart. Repeat them to your children. Take them when you sit down in your house. Talk about them, sorry, when you sit down in your house and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up and when you go out and when you come in, wear them, the Bible says here, as an ornament on your head and on your hands and write them on the doorposts of your heart. And this is what he wants you to write, that the Lord is your, our God. He is the one. He is our God. Let's pray for these parents, shall we? Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for these parents today. Come on, if, for those that are, are wanting to and willing, just stretch your hand out as a, a sign of support for them. Father, we thank you for Emma and for Adam. We pray your touch upon their life. We pray that they will not, knowing that they will not be alone. This is a moment far greater than we realize that you're going to give them the empowering of your presence, your name, your spirit, your word. That's going to be the, the guiding post, the guidelines, the, the framework of their marriage and of their lives. Father, we hedge their marriage about. We pray strength into that. We pray for their physical healing and their touch of God upon their bodies, Father God. We thank you for the healing completely of every sickness, every disease. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, we thank you as well that, Lord God, that their love would be invigorated, that their love would be truly for each other. No distractions, not taken out, not deceived in any way. But we hedge them about with true love that comes from you for each other. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we bless them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So as I'm, you doing okay? Doing good. God, parents, you want to come up? We're going to crowd the stage out a bit. So that's really good. So you're not alone. How you guys going? Hi, I'm Clint. Your name is Sam? George. They did tell me your names, but I forgot to write it out, so forgive me. So that's why I was introducing myself. All right. 
Well, this is a really great honor for you too. And it's, it's a great tokenistic friendship thing, but I don't think the way that they're placing on it is just from a friendship relationship thing. It's definitely needed, but it's because you carry weight in their life. And not only physical and emotional strength and weight, but also spiritual. So that's in the title of God Parents, you're going to be the couple that's going to help them to have a God perspective about marriage, about life, and about raising their beautiful Addison. So can we say a prayer for you guys? Oh, get to hold. So, George. Father, I thank you for George and Sam. I just pray for this amazing couple. Father, I pray that you would strengthen them. Pray that they would come to know you in such a deep way that they would be the godparents of this beautiful girl. And in the name that they would know you as God and that they would always direct her to God, they would always pray for her, that they would always encourage her. They would also always buy really good presents. That's a given. And that, Lord Jesus, you would bless them, bless their relationship, bless their generations, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Addison, now I get to talk to Addison. Strength and dignity are her clothing. She looks beautiful in that outfit. But the Bible says that strength and dignity are her clothing. And her position is strong and secure. She rejoices over the future, knowing that she and her family are in readiness for it. Addison, you are going to be clothed with strength and beauty. I know. Addison, you are going to be secure in God. And you're going to be a person of joy. I know. You're going to love to eat your hands, not for too long. And one day, Addison, as you grow into a little young girl and then into a teenager and into a young adult, I know. It's hoping to get that. I'll get you to sing in a minute. And then one day, you're going to be a mum. I know. Not so fast. I get it. I get it, folks. But the promise of God is not just for now. It's throughout a life. That's pretty cool. That's what we're trying to say. All right. She's going, get on with it, mate. Get on with it. All right. All right. Can you, I hold, get, it, get you to hold that? his hair and his chin. <laughs> Addison, you are going to be a fertile ground that when the, God, the Word of God is placed in you, it's going to produce a beautiful harvest. Dad, she's going to be fertile. Addison is son of the ground. And I felt, I felt a caution. Be careful what you plant in her. Be careful what she's exposed to. Because she's fertile. So wherever, whatever seed falls in the ground, it produces whatever that seed was. And God's saying that because she is so part of his creation, I don't think they can see you. Because she's part of his creation, she's so beautiful and so fertile that as you place the positive, as you place love, as you place the word of God, as you place the love that you guys have for her, she'll absorb that like a seed, like a groundwood, and then that will produce life in her. If there's seeds of put down and cutting down, I know that's not in both of you. 
that's what that produces. So right here before you, this beautiful, fertile ground. And God says, she's the making of my creation. She's the miracle that I've given to you to raise her in the love that you have for each other, in the love that you have for him, in his word. Amen. All right. I need to dedicate you. Can I pray for you? Can you guys all see it? Father, we want to say thank you for Addison. Thank you that she likes the microphone. But Father, more than that, I pray that she becomes a person that worships you. I pray that she becomes a person that knows you. I pray that she becomes a person that loves you. Thank you for the heritage that is in her family of people of faith. And I thank you, God, that she will build on the previous foundation set by great-grandparents and parents. And here she is today, being dedicated to you. So Father, in this moment, Addison Joan McGuinness, we thank you for the miracle that is alive. We thank you for giving her life. We thank you for giving her to these beautiful parents, as Emma and Adam. And Father, we just declare the name of Jesus over her. We declare the name of Jesus over her, that Father, you would bless her in the name of Jesus. Is that your way of telling me, like, shut up, move on? That was good singing. So, Father, we thank you for her. We bless her and we dedicate it to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give it up for Anderson, guys. This is Addison Joan McGuinness. Can you say those names? Addison Joan McGuinness. Can you repeat? When we see her in this house, saying you better do it okay you better do it folks let's just give it up for this beautiful family Emma and all good come on let's just thank this family thank you guys bless ya you guys can be seated thank you beautiful all right oh sorry I got a certificate oh sorry 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 mum and dad come back here come back Thank you guys so much. We'd love to welcome up Lisa. Oh, Tyler and announcements. Yeah, there we go. All right, this is going to be the quickest tithes and announcements you've ever heard in your life. Let's get ready to give. If you are out, out yeah, come on, Ashes, come on up. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And the tithe is always about putting God first in everything that we do in our lives. So as you get ready to give,
visiting with us. Uh, you're not obligated, but you won't be let out of the building if you don't. Um, so feel free to participate. Father, thank you for tithes and our offerings. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for giving. We really appreciate that. Hey, listen, just to just say and welcome everyone that is a guest. I think there are more guests than people that are here normally. So can I get the guests to all welcome the people that are normally here? If you could do that, that would be... Thank you, guys. Just, yeah. Now, let's reciprocate that and let's welcome all our guests, folks. That's awesome. Oh, we beat you. Uh, we really, really want to say thank you for coming uh, today. We want to also let you know our youth group, Youth Changes, are on break over Christmas. Uh, now, this is a really, really important one. So we're looking for volunteers. If you have, are a volunteer that knows how to paint uh, faces or do face paint, this Tuesday night is our final dinner, our Love Langford. Yeah. For those that are visiting with us, we have a dinner for our community every fortnight through school terms. So this one is the culmination of all the dinners throughout the year, and we're going to be out in the car park where you've parked today, and it's all set up, and there's singing and uh, activities and food and people uh, and face paint. And so if you are a volunteer we'd love, and you're able to do that, please see Lisa. Now, Lisa will be coming in and just speaking to us in the time that I've left her to speak, which is about five minutes. Um, in a minute so or see me love you to be a volunteer in that and uh so also wanted to make sure that oh there's going to be a live santa kids i was going to say something then but i won't because that just ruins some kids anyway so there'll be a live santa be awesome okay uh this is our christmas tree and it looks beautiful but two weeks ago that were filled with i don't know over 150 cards uh, of people in our community that are doing it really tough this, way, this, this Christmas time and a, a lot of people are doing it that way and the, the church and local businesses have been so generous in taking those cards, buying a gift for a, a person uh, that is on that card So, but what we need them, we need them back next Sunday at the latest uh, not wrapped, just with a tag stuck to it for those that have taken a, a, a tag please make sure you bring it back next Sunday uh, not Monday, the following, next Sunday would be really, really uh, amazing so that we then need to wrap them, allocate it with the address and then we drop them off just before Christmas around the 22nd, 23rd and it's one of the most amazing things to go to people's homes who aren't expecting gifts and to receive gifts and hampers and all of that. So we are just thrilled as a church to be able to do that for our community. So Tuesday night is our dinner Sunday next week, have to have all your gifts in by then. Please bring them back. All right, we're good? And then on Christmas, again, with people, we are inundated with people coming through the week looking for uh, food and, and for frozen meals and, and different stuff. So we're constantly giving out all of that. And I think our, our resources are dropping a little bit. And then, as we know, Christmas is a harder time for, for many. So if you're shopping and you want to drop off a couple of cans of baked beans into your... Uh, trolley or a carton of baked beans and then drop them off here that would be awesome again next Sunday so we'll put some hampers together for for people that's pretty awesome I love how our church does that so and then Christmas Day service on the 25th 10 to 11 we're going to be meeting right here it's going to be a lot of fun and then today as you leave just make sure that we clean up uh, because there's another church uh, coming in at two o'clock beautiful I think that's about it we're good all right, so you have one minute. You can't get up, but you can turn around. Kids. Oh, you want the kids. Oh, kids. If you're a kid, um, now adults, you're not a kid because, oh, let's go. So in the back, just across the corridor, we have our kids area there. So if you're able to and you want to go see what our kids program is, just follow that 
lovely lady there, Paula, and um, check with your mum and dad. Uh, they do some activities and colouring ins and some stories. If you don't feel it, no, not a problem, no stress. Okay? Happy to help. All right. Is that it? <laughs> All right. You can't get up, but you have to say hi to someone around, in front of you, behind you, and to the side of you. And there's Lisa comes up. Coming up, Lise. Good morning. So, just to go over a little bit of what Pastor Clint said. If you were free, if you were free on the 20th of December to help come in here and wrap the presents, please come and see me or contact me on Facebook. And if you are free to deliver presents on the 22nd, which is Thursday, please come and see me as well. So, you just go around... Uh, there's different areas outside of the city of Gosnells, but mainly the city of Gosnells, and we just go off and we deliver to the houses. So if you can help wrap on the 20th or deliver on the 22nd, please come and see me after service. So people who don't know me, my name is Lisa. <laughs> I, I am the um, executive community pastor for C3 Langford. <laughs> Thank you, and welcome to our visitors. Such a beautiful dedication. Our pastor always does beautiful dedications for such a beautiful little girl. So I'm speaking this morning on hope, and what a fitting uh, subject or word to speak about at Christmas time. And I love Christmas time. What we did for worship this morning, just declaring the name of Jesus. And so I love Christmas time. The thing I really love about Christmas time is the love and the generosity you see from people. And what we do with our tree, what we do with our dinners, that's throughout the years. But what we do with the, the tree and the hampers and the Christmas dinner, and you just see it flow throughout the community. I love going to the shops at Christmas time. And a lot of people don't like going to the shops at Christmas time. I love going to the shops at Christmas time. And I especially love going on Christmas Eve because of the atmosphere that's out there, because of the people that you just see people coming together and eating together. You see people rushing around. But, but, the rushing, but the rushing around is people wanting to make something special for somebody else, for coming together as family, or they're planning something. Or who works in retail? Does anybody work in retail that is in this building? Nobody works in retail. I used to, many years ago, I used to work in retail, and that's where my love for Christmas shopping uh, not Christmas shopping, but Christmas being at the shops come from. I loved working on Christmas Eve. I love the running out at lunchtime and going out and buying a gift. So this is the reason why I still go to the shops on Christmas Eve. And so at, in retail, what um, would happen is after Christmas Eve, they don't get to go home once it closes. So it closes about five o'clock and they have to stay on for about a few hours after getting ready for Boxing Day sales. So it's out with the one and in with the other. Christmas is sort of like, okay, that was done and now we're getting on to Boxing Days. And I feel that there's a lot of people, especially in this day and especially just with everything going up and we see inflation, we see mortgages, we see all different things happening around the place at the moment and, and the sicknesses and going through COVID. And we've, I feel that people are just getting to the end of the year and going, you know what, out with one and in with the new. I want to finish Christmas because Christmas, when you come to the end of the year, when you come to the end of this year, you rarely hear people say, I really want to stay in this year. You usually hear people go, you know, well, this was a pretty tough year. This was a long year. I want it to finish. I want to go into the next year. That's what you usually hear because Christmas time brings such reflection of maybe what has been lost, maybe what hasn't happened this year for you, maybe the promises that you actually thought were going to happen and then we put in our own timing and then it's not God's timing, we put it in our timings, now we're disappointed because it hasn't happened and we go, God, where are you? And so this morning, we're just going to speak a bit about hope 
delayed, hope deferred, hope that has been postponed, hope that actually hasn't happened yet. And that's what we're going to speak on this morning. So I just want to pray for this word. Just thank you, Father. Thank you, God, for your word. You say that your word goes out and does not come back void that it has a purpose and a plan, and we just thank you. I thank you right now that these are your words, not mine, Father, and that it finds good soil to land on, Father, and that you just penetrate every single word into the hearts of people today, Father. In your name, amen. So good morning online. So I want to say good morning online. Good morning to everybody. So we're speaking on waiting and the delay in waiting. And Pastor Paul came up with this um, series. He was praying over it, what series to do for the month of December, and it was hope. And he spoke last week about how hope isn't a feeling. And we can use it so flippantly and really take for granted the word hope. We can say, I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a good birthday. I hope you have good sleep. I hope you wake up well tomorrow. And, and they're all good things. We, want, we hope that for people. But if it doesn't happen, then it's like, oh, well, it didn't happen. So really what we're saying is, I want you to have a good day. I want you to have a good birthday. I want you to wake up well. That's what we're saying. We're actually saying, I want you to do that. But if that doesn't happen, oh, well, that's life. It doesn't happen. But hope isn't a feeling. Hope's not a feeling, and that's what we're going to speak about today. So Matthew 11, 2 to 3, when John was in prison, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but when John was in prison, he heard the deeds of the Messiah. He sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? And I feel that some people can feel like they're in a prison. They're surrounded by every angle and they're going you know what Jesus is this you that I'm looking for or is it something else that I'm actually grasping on and, and holding on to and looking for and Pastor Paul spoke about we can't last three weeks without food I hope it is right Paul can't last three weeks without food can't last for three days without water is it three minutes without air and three seconds without hope all right the Bible, <laughs> thank you, everybody. I remember that. I didn't have that here. So the Bible says in Proverbs thirteen twelve, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And the message says, unrelenting disappointments leave your heart sick. And sick in this setting is saying, referring to sadness, a very painful mind. The mind becomes uneasy. The heart sinks and it fails and the person becomes dispirited. So the person becomes hopeless. So unrelenting disappointments creates hopelessness and your mind becomes very ill. You, your heart becomes sick. Unrelenting disappointments. And this time of year can actually do that for someone. How many people like waiting? Does anybody like waiting? How many people are patient? How many people are patient in the car? <laughs> Patient in the car, especially this time of year. Me and Elton almost got wiped out by a bus yesterday. He was just so angry. But, <laughs> sorry, Mum. <laughs> he was just so angry. People are so impatient all through the year, but this time of year. So I don't think anyone's sitting here going, I really like waiting, or lining up in the queues at the shops, especially this time of year. Or we've got now signs all over, the, all over medical clinics saying, please don't abuse the staff, because clearly that happens, because people get tired of waiting. I was at um, an appointment with Deanna a couple of weeks ago, and we watched this man who, his fault, didn't bring a referral to wherever we were. And so they, these people behind the desk had to find his surgery to find where this referral was. His five-year-old, or however old she was about that, was getting frustrated and she was getting impatient, which made him get impatient, which made him start yelling at the people at the counter. So what that's actually showing, then they leave and they walk out. So what's that actually showing to this little girl is, you know what, you don't have to wait. You just abuse the person. And that's what he's taught her, because he didn't want to wait. Because we're not patient as people, because we want it now. We have quick meals, we have quick everything, because we want everything now, because we're living in such a fast pace, such a fast, busy life, we want everything now. So waiting is like we don't want to wait. And that's what happens when we actually have a dream or, a, or like waiting for, a, you know, in line is very surface. 
But when we're waiting for something in our lives that isn't happening, that God's promised us it's going to happen, and that's not happening, we can get crazy behavior because we can start taking things into our own hands and not leaving it to God because he's promised us this. We want it to happen, but God, you're not coming in my timing, so I'm going to make this happen. And we can start when we're in the car, like the bus did yesterday, and you start beeping or flashing your lights or whatever it is, but it's something that's inside you that's going, you know what, I'm impatient. You have to admit that. I'm impatient. Or what am I waiting for? Or God, where are you? It's very rarely, so when you, when you are getting robbed of your hope, I saw in the news today that um, they are estimating that one billion worth of goods are going to be shoplifted over Christmas. One billion dollars shoplifted. And I was thinking, so shoplifting, when you shoplift, it's very rare when you shoplift that you're going to get that thing back. When someone shoplifts, it's very rare they're going to bring it back, right? Very rare. I say very rare. I think my mum finds out a lot of stuff when I'm on this stage. But when I was 13 years old, right, I didn't, I wasn't with a, I didn't, I, was, I didn't, I wasn't brought up Christian, okay? Let me just say that from the beginning. No judgment, people, all right? So I was 13, and I wasn't with a great group of friends. And, you know, not for Christians so much, but non-Christians, those troll dolls that came out when, like, 30 years ago, they were really cool. And I could not afford one, right? So... My friends were like, we should take one. <laughs> so we go into the shop, right? <clears throat> it was things. We go in there. And now I'm trying, they're all taken. They're gone, right? So I'm trying to figure out, how am I going to take this troll doll? Where am I going to put it? I've never shoplifted before. How am I going to, you know, I've got to take this thing, right? So I grab it and I don't know where I put it. I put it somewhere. And I walk out of the store. Now, I wasn't brought up Christian, but I was brought up with morals. And I start feeling guilty as anything. Like, I'm like, I cannot leave with this troll doll. So now I've got to work out how to walk back into the store and unshoplift with no one seeing me. So I walk into this store and I'm trying to take this out so nobody sees me and I successfully unshoplifted and walk out of the store, right? And I never shoplifted again. And I, I put it back. But it's very rare when you shoplift and someone shoplifts, did they bring it back? But when circumstances start shoplifting your hope, they're not going to give it back. It's not going to come back. And your hope's going to keep going, it's going to keep going, it's going to keep going. And unrelenting disappointments leads to hopelessness. So when it shoplifts, it robs you, and it robs you, and it robs you, and your hope is gone. And I've said this before, like, so people who don't know my story, I became a Christian in my late teens, lasted for a few years, and I took off again because of unrelenting disappointments, because of unanswered prayers, because my hope was in circumstances. And so when I came back 17 years ago, I didn't realize I had this book of prayers and I ended up calling it the unanswered prayers book because every prayer in there didn't happen. And no matter what happened when I came back 17 years ago and all these things that God was doing in my life, and they were amazing, and I could see the blessings, I didn't realize that my hope was so robbed, so shoplifted, so gone, that I just didn't hope. I didn't expect for anything, because I didn't want to get disappointed, because when I hoped for something, I got disappointed. When I expected something, I got disappointed. So I didn't want to blame God. So when I did realize I did expect, then I got disappointed. I beat myself up because it was my fault, because I shouldn't have expected anything to begin with, because then I'm just going to get disappointed. So what is the point of hoping? And I came into a reborn again 17 years ago. I came in with that, and it was only a few years ago did I realize I'm holding on to this... Um, book of unanswered prayers for what to remind me of this is you you keep things when you're younger you keep things that remind you of stuff but I'm keeping this book that's reminding me of all the unanswered prayers that I prayed and so then my hope's been robbed and so I'm not now able to expect anything I'm not able to dream I'm not able to make goals I'm not able to do anything because if I did I'll just get disappointed. So therefore, I'm just living in this like mundane Christian existence of, yes, God is good. Yes, God is going to answer if he wants to. But I, I went into this, if it's your will, God. 
And it's amazing to actually pray into God's will. Yes, if this is your will. But it's not if this is... So I found my prayers being like, God, blah, 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 blah. But if it's your will. Because then it led me to this. If it doesn't happen, then I don't get disappointed. So this is God's way. And so what I did was I didn't realize I'm not actually having any hope in who Jesus is. That, that connection's not happening because I'm going, oh, well, if this is your will then, oh, well, I won't expect anything from you, God, so then I'm not disappointed from you, God. And that was where I was living for a very long time. And for some people, the fear of disappointment hurts more than not hoping, and that was me. The fear of disappointment hurts more than not hoping, so therefore I won't hope, so I'm not disappointed. So then I'm not, my heart's not getting sick because I'm not hoping. But hope isn't a feeling. Disappointment is, sadness is, happiness is. But hope's not a feeling. And then when we put hope in that same category of these feelings, it can be robbed. And that's where we end up with hopelessness because hope can be taken when we see it as a circumstantial part of our lives. I hope, oh well, it didn't happen. And the worldly definition for hope is, the word is used to mean a wish. The strength of it is in the person's desire. So the more you hope, how passionately you hope for that thing, that's the strength of that hope that you're wishing for. But a biblical hope, the definition is the confident expectation of what God has promised. So the confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength lies in his faithfulness, right? So the confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength is in his faithfulness. So the hope for yesterday, today, and tomorrow is Jesus. So without hope, right, without Jesus, so we're going to say hope is Jesus and hope in Jesus. Without Jesus, I have no power to dismiss when people hurt me. I don't. Without Jesus, I cannot dismiss when people hurt me because I will feel that hurt. I can't forgive and I can't walk in love. I can't, right? So I hold on to that without hope, without Jesus. Without hope and without Jesus, if something doesn't go to plan, if I get sick or if there's a diagnosis, I will fall, I can fall into self-pity and self-justification. How many people, I think I would have a whole room put their hands up if I were to say, do you feel self-justified for where you are sitting at today? Because something's happened in your life that you can self-justify of why you are where you are today. It doesn't matter where you are. You can self-justify why you are where you are today. Without Jesus, we can sometimes give up and we can't go on. And sometimes we can become the victim of life because it hasn't been answered by God because we've put God into our own timing. Through the Bible, the definition of hope is God is working and continuing to work all the time. It's not an uncertainty. God is working all the time. I don't hope when Elton goes away for work, I don't hope that he comes back. I'm certain he's coming back. I'm certain of that. I don't hope that our marriage is going to work. Jesus is the center of our marriage, so I expect it's going to work because that's what God says when he's the center of your marriage. I expect it to work. I don't hope it to work. I don't wake up today and go, gee, I hope our marriage lasts. No, I'm expecting it to because I know Jesus is the center of our marriage. That's an expectation that God is working. It's a confident expectation in the Word of God. That's what hope is. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. For faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We need hope to have faith, right? So when we're going to step out in a faith action, you need hope that what you're doing, that confidence assurance that God is going to meet you at that faith action. That's what faith is. So otherwise, we're going to have faith and we're going to go, I'm going to step out, but with no hope of God's assuring ex promise, well, why is that going to happen? Why are you going to step out? So we have so many Christians who are not stepping out in faith because why? Their hope is not there. Their hope of that confident expectation of what God is going to answer and God is going to meet them there 
they don't step out. So then we have a whole world full of Christians who aren't always stepping out because of the lack of expectation and just the, the fear of disappointment or why would we do that? Oh, I'll step out, but you know what, God? You know what? If it's your will, you'll meet me. And that's not that confident expectation in hope. Our hope is set on the promises and God's character, his faithfulness is unwavering. And I want to read this to you, but I really would love, well, I'd encourage you because it makes no difference to me. It makes a difference to you. If you write this particular thing down, not, don't have to today, but just write the Hebrews 6, 10 to 19, and we're going to go through this. And I hope I don't lose you because this is God's promise over your life. So for God, read, read up here with me. For God, the faithful one is not unfair. How can he forget the beautiful work you have done for him? He remembers the love you demonstrate as you continually serve his beloved ones for the glory of his name. But we long to see you passionately advance until the end and you find your hope fulfilled. It doesn't say you might find your hope fulfilled. It doesn't say you might. It says, until the end, and you will find your hope fulfilled. So don't allow your hearts to grow dull. Don't lose your enthusiasm. But follow the example of those who fully received what God has promised because of their strong faith and patient endurance. Now, when God made a promise to Abraham, since there was no greater than himself, he swore an oath on his own integrity to keep the promise as sure as God exists. So he said, have no doubt, I promise to bless you over and over and give you a son and multiply you without measure. So Abraham waited patiently in faith and succeeded in seeing the promise fulfilled. It is very common for people to swear an oath by something greater than themselves, for that oath will confirm their statement and end all dispute. So when we're going, you know, I swear on my name, I swear on this person, this person, this person, this person, we're trying to actually say, I'm really not lying here. I'm actually saying this is what's happening and this is what God is doing here. In the same way, God wanted to end all doubt and confirm it even more forcefully to those who would inherit his promises. And that's you and that's me. No doubt for those who would inherit his promises. His purpose was unchangeable. For God added his vow to the promise. So it is impossible for God to lie, for we know that his promise and his vow will never change. And now we have run into his heart to hide ourselves in his faithfulness. This is where we find his strength and comfort. For he, for he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time. So when you're feeling down and out, he's actually saying here, this is where... You find his strength and comfort. Run into his heart to hide ourselves in his faithfulness. This is where we find his strength and comfort, for he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time. An unshakable hope. It does not go away. It's not based on circumstance. We have this certain hope, like a strong, unbreakable anchor, holding our souls to God himself. It took Abraham 20 years to see the promise, right? And him and Sarah went a little bit crazy waiting. They took it into their own hands. They tried to make God's promise be fulfilled within that time. Was that written there? No. It said God's promise was still fulfilled. And it actually said Abraham waited patiently. It actually said that. Because God's promise goes over what we feel, over what we do. When God says something, that still happens. It's still fulfilled because he swore it on his own name for those who inherit his promises. And that is you. That is me. That is us today. This hope is an anchor for our souls, not everything that we're going through today, not our finances, because we change. From when I wrote those prayers, you know, I don't know how many years ago that was, <laughs> but when I wrote that, those prayers to where I am today, I've changed. I wouldn't probably pray those prayers then. And God knows that. He knows where you are today. You're going to change tomorrow. So he's not sitting here going, oh, they want this today. I'm going to do this today. They want this tomorrow. I'm going to do this tomorrow. They want, no, he's saying, I've already made a promise for you. You inherit my promises. You're a child of mine. 
When you give your heart to God, you're a child of mine. I've already made those promises for you. They're already written ahead of time. Like Addison's days, already written. Already written. So when Pastor Clint's saying, you know what, just watch what goes over her. Watch that because they're already written. It's already done. That's the God. That's the promise that we have in Jesus. That's the promise. It's not what we have. It's not what we don't have. This hope is Jesus and he is living and that is an anchor for our soul. What is the condition of your soul today? Are you tied as this anchor to Jesus? Are you tied in that? That no matter what storm comes, no matter what disappointment, no matter what betrayal, no matter what unforgiveness, no matter what hits you, no matter what sickness, are you tied to Jesus? That in the storms, you don't drift. Are you tied that in these storms, this anchor is solid and stuck to God himself like that scripture says? Or are you loosely tied? Because you know what? I actually, you see some people that when they go through storms, you go, wow, their faith is so strong. Their faith is really strong. So they look really, really tired, right? And then the water goes still. And then the months happen and the days happen and the years happen and Oh, but I was really strong here. In the storm, I was strong. You know, when the disappointment happened, I was strong. When I could see what was going on with my own eyes, I was strong. But when the water goes still and the days go and the months go and the years go and you don't get your promises, are you tied strong enough that you don't just start to drift and you don't even realize because it's just so mundane. You're just so living. You're just so going, you know what? I believe in you, God, but your will will be, will be, okay, sarah, sarah, what will be, will be, you know, I'm just going to start just drifting and you don't even know because you think you were tied because you were tied in the storm. But are you tied when things aren't answered over the days, over the months, over the years? And God shows in this story because some of you actually might think, you know what, I know God gave me a promise and I was there one day, but I'm not there today because, you know what, I did put things into my own hands and I sort of stuffed up and I sort of messed up and, and now I don't know if God's promise is still going to happen because did I muck it up? Abraham didn't muck it up because he still swore an oath on his own name, his integrity, his character. And what I did all those years back then was I put God's character into question in my heart. That's what I did because my prayers weren't answered. So God, are you hearing me? God, are you there? God's character was put into question and I didn't even know it because I did not stand and go, okay, God, no, this is what you say. This is what you declare. So my life is spent serving you. My life is spent loving you. My life is spent loving people. And that's what's so special about this time of Christmas is we get to see and we get this, we get to do it all year. But the world starts, you, the world wants to be generous this time of year. But that's God's heart always. Wants to be generous always. True hope and assurance is assurance that God is working even when we don't see it. Right? The Israelites didn't see it, but God was making a way. We don't see it, but God is making a way. And that way, his name is Jesus. It's our living hope. He keeps us stable. He keeps us from drifting. It's not a feeling. He is living. And we have every reason to walk out of here with joy and peace today. Every reason that we can walk out of here and not lose heart, keep our enthusiasm in our heart and have this peace that God promises, peace beyond understanding. And I love how Bill Johnson puts this. If you want peace beyond understanding, you usually have to give up your right to understand. If you want peace beyond understanding, which is what God promises, he promises peace beyond our comprehension, peace beyond our understanding, then we have to give up the right to understand. Because what happens is when we try to understand, we put God in a box, we put God in our limitations, and then we get disappointed because God's in our limitations. Because we're trying to understand. So we want peace beyond comprehension, but we want to comprehend what's going on. But we can't comprehend what's going on. But God is bigger than our limitations. And some of us drift trying to figure that out. Some of us drift trying to understand, God, what are you doing? I want to understand what you're doing. And maybe today that's just you going, you know what, yes, God, I want to give you my yes, my hope is in you. 
That is it. I give up my right to understanding. Jesus, you're the anchor to my soul. That is the hope that I will hold on to. So Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. It doesn't say maybe. That's actually a promise. That's actually saying that to you. But a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And we have this assurance from Hebrews 6. His purposes are unchangeable. It doesn't matter what you've done. It's unchangeable. You can't change God's mind. It's unchangeable. So verse 18 is impossible for God to lie. For we know that his promise and his vows will never change. And now we have run into his heart to hide ourselves in his faithfulness. This is where we find his strength and his comfort. For he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time. An unshakable hope and his name is Jesus. And I'm going to get the band up. We are going to sing Living Hope. right? Because in this song it talks about a mountain I couldn't climb. It talks about in desperation, I look to heavens. And you might be in this place being desperate and needing to look to heaven. Or you might be in this place going, you know what, I have just drifted. I didn't even know I drifted. I was once believing, but then in the mundane and all the unanswered prayers or the things that didn't happen in the time that I thought it was meant to happen in, the limitations that I put God in, it didn't happen. So therefore, my rope untied and I've drifted. Hope is not a feeling. Hope is Jesus and he is the anchor to our soul. So this morning when we sing this song, there's an opportunity for you to do a faith action and come at the front. You don't have to. You can do that in your chair or you can come to the front. It's totally up to you. But make this a moment where you tie that anchor between you and God himself, between you and Jesus himself. Tie that anchor. God's plans for you have never changed. When we look back on the Israelites, we read about it. You can read this whole Bible and you go, you know what? Why didn't they see it? God was always there. God, they wanted food, God provided every day. They wanted this, God provided every day. But you know what? In the crazies, they were in the waiting, they went crazy. Right? They started doing false gods, they started doing all sorts of stuff, just leaving God. They, did, they were just doing all sorts of stuff because they were in the waiting. And I wonder that if we read back in hindsight in our life, if we would actually go, no, just hold on because it's coming. It's there. He's already made a way. And that's what Christmas is. It was the birth of our Savior. That's what they're waiting for. That's what we're waiting for. But we already seen it. It's already happened. And we still drift. Because our anchor is not tied to Jesus. Our hope is in our circumstances. Our hope is not living, but He is living. Jesus is living. Our hope is living. So when we look back on our lives in hindsight, don't miss it and go, if I had just held on that little bit longer, that promise would have been fulfilled. If I just held on. If somebody read back your book, just hold hold on because he's already made a way it's already promised it's already been written it's already done are you the one who is to come or shall we expect for someone else Jesus replies go back and report to John what you hear and see the blind receive sight the lame walk those who have leprosy are cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. That is our hope. That is who He is. And maybe you're questioning today, Jesus, is it you? Yes, it is Him. And maybe you've walked away from those miracles and those promises that He promised over your life and those miracles that we read about, you go, is that really you? Is that really true? I haven't seen it in my life. Your anchor might not have been tied on that strong. So this morning, I'm going to give an opportunity for you. Just everyone's eyes closed, so everyone has their own moment. Head bow, eyes closed. So if you've walked away, your anchor's sort of like not been tied to you, and you've sort of drifted away from that hope, that anchor, between you and Jesus, if that's you this morning, or you've never made that commitment to go, I want to make that commitment between me and you, God. 
Jesus, you are my Saviour. Because we can come into this season and we can just be so busy that we get to Christmas and we're so tired and we just forget that this is the day we're celebrating that our Lord Saviour was born. And that was for you and for me. So if that is you, just place your hand on your heart because we're going to pray. If that is you this morning, I've walked away. I once had that anchor tied, but I don't anymore. If that is you, just place your hand on your hearts this morning. And we're all going to pray this together so you're not alone. I'll just give one more moment. Lord Jesus, let's all say this together. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Saviour. Take complete control of my life and may my soul be like an anchor tied to you. Help me walk in your footsteps daily by the Holy Spirit. So if that was your first time, we have something that we can um, give to you at the end of service. Just come up the front and we'd love to pray with you. But now we're going to stand up. We're going to sing this song. And I spoke to Novi um, in, the, in the week about this song. It was like, we're going to bash the walls down with this song, right? If that's possible. Because in this time, we are going to know that that hope is Jesus. And that hope, what He's promised over your life, is still coming. It's unchanging. It can't change. God can't lie. And He swore an oath. So when you're... If you get, because we all get to those points where we go, God, where is it? Or God, I hoped, or God, I prayed, or God, I, you know, all of these sort of stuff. And we question, don't question God's character if you can, because God's character is true. God's character is unchanging. God's character is unwavering. God cannot lie. He is unshakable. This is unshakable hope that we have in Jesus, that anchor that is tied for, to your soul, the condition of your soul. You can all start to stand. The condition of your soul this morning, if you want to step out in faith and you want to do that faith action because of the hope that you have that's unchangeable and you're going to declare that this morning, please come to the front. If you want prayer while you're at the front, just keep your right hand raised and someone will come pray. But if you want to just make that time that you just want to be at the front to just do that declaration of faith because this hope is Jesus and this hope is unchanging and this hope is what we have been waiting for. This hope is what you've been waiting for in everything that you've been going through and especially in what we're going through in this world today. So if that is is you. You don't have to come to the front, but if that is you and you want to come to the front, this altar is open for you. Let's sing this song, listen to these words and let's declare and go home and read Hebrews 6 because that is a promise declared over your life that God is unshaking. God does not lie and God wants you to walk out of here with enthusiasm because of the promises that He has given you for those who inherit His promises and that is you today in Jesus' name. Amen.